repositories. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make online repositories. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, which you'll hear about later. Okay. If you don't know, the newer versions of Blender have changed to a extension kind of platform rather than add-ons. And it seems like this is something they're going to push. And hopefully one day there's going to be an online asset browser. But the point is, it seems like add-ons are hosted online now. Specifically, the Blender extension platform has this URL. And you can see there's all of these free extensions that anybody can upload. And there's a review process and whatever. And the cool thing about it is you can select your extension, get the add-on, and then just drag it into Blender. And then you can just say, enable this. So long story short, there's this push of putting add-ons on websites that you then pull from. So let, let's make a online repository. First thing we're going to need is to add a remote repository. We don't know what the URL is. We don't know what the authentication is. Just click create. The tutorial repository. Well, I don't know how to spell it. Repo. And then you can see it's asking us where the frickety should I look for stuff. And there's a lot of ways to do this. I think probably the easiest is to host it on GitHub. So make a GitHub account. It's free. Make a repository. Also free. And I'm going to call this tutorial repo. To start off, we're going to make it public, which is much easier to handle. And then we're going to talk about private repository. So create your repository. Now, one of the add-ons I have lets you really quickly look for images. Like let's say we're looking for a frog, maybe frog texture, and we're looking at Bing, you click OK, and there's like a fast download and all of these. Let's say you have this add-on or you bought an add-on from somebody else. How do I add that to the repo? And while you may want to just upload the zip file of your add-on, unfortunately, it's a bit more complicated than that. So you're just going to put this in a folder. We're just going to do a bit of a intermediary step. I'm going to call this repo add-ons. It doesn't really matter what you call it. You throw this inside. There is a step where you need to take every single add-on in here and you need to tell Blender to index it. Say, this is an add-on for this version of Blender. You can look at it and here's a whole list of them. This is a command I don't personally remember. So I made a, I made a bookmark. You can see this is the Blender documentation and they have this nonsense. Basically what this command does, I'll put it in the description, I guess, is you can take a folder and it's going to make it repo compatible. So I'm just going to take this top line and copy it. The only things to change is I don't need this H tag, which stands for help. I don't need help. I am the help. And the second thing is we need to change what our, well, second of third, two of three, is we need to change our uh, repo directory. This is basically saying, what is the folder we're looking at? In this case, it is this folder. And then the final thing is it's very likely your command prompt or terminal or whatever is not going to know what we mean by Blender. For example, if I open up command prompt and run this command, it has no idea what we're talking about. What is Blender? All you need to know is we need to tell command prompt, where is Blender? For most of us, that's going to be in the main hard drive and program files, Blender foundation, and pick the newest version of Blender. In here, you're going to see the Blender executable or application. I'm just going to copy that. And now it will know what Blender is. So long story short, we're basically saying, hey, Blender, I'm running a command. The command is make a extension kind of thing for us from this like file path. You can take all of this, copy it, paste it. It'll only take a second, but this time you can see it's doing something. Compiled one package. And indeed, you're going to see there is a JSON file. If you don't know what this is, it's not too important. But if we view the document, you get, it's almost like readable. It's saying this is version one of this add-on I made called Fast Image. It has the description and it has all of these things. This is what I want to upload to GitHub, okay? Or any like online place that is accessible to anybody. So I'm going to take my folder, drop it in here. It will take a second to upload. And what you should see is any add-ons you have here and additionally the uh, json file so i'm going to commit changes and if you haven't used github before all we're really saying is that my repository has a folder and that folder has these two things now back to blender you're going to remember that our repo wants a url it wants to know where are we talking about specifically the url it cares about isn't just our repository url but it's looking for this json file that tells blender what is going on inside this json file click raw basically this is going to have a web page a static web page that just has all this information so just copy that go to blender and then for the repository, put this as the URL and hit enter. To check that it works, now when I type in fast image, which I uninstalled so that we could install it through this repo, you're going to see it's right here. And more importantly, when I disable this and I enable it, it appears and disappears. And you can see it's from the repository tutorial repo. I click install, it brings in the add-on. And now I have that add-on I talked about. So let's say now I want to add a second add-on to my repo. There you can use Git and all of this to do it, but here's the simple version. I'm going to take my new add-on file. I'm going to drop it in this folder. And now you're going to think to yourself, oh, this JSON is out of date. It doesn't know that we added a new one. Because of this, I can just delete it instead of doing it manually. And you can hit up, by the way, the up arrow to bring in the last command, hit enter. And it says, okay, I found two packages, easy pivots, and we have fast image. So you could kind of like add the files. I guess what would be faster is I can just take this folder and I can delete the directory and say, okay, delete the directory, say yes. And now inside our blank repository, again, you didn't need to do this, but it's just simpler since we don't have many files. I'm going to add, upload new files, just bring in the whole folder, hit commit changes. And now you just want to make sure that in this case, 
case, your index.json URL is the same, but you do want to verify that. And because we haven't told this repository yet to like auto refresh all the time, I'm just going to hit this refresh manually. And now the whole idea is it's pulled any updates it found from a GitHub vast image, type that in. You can see it's from the tutorial repo. And uh, the other one was easy pivot, which you can see is also from the tutorial repo. So in other words, you can just have this remote repository that you or somebody else can edit and it will just bring in those changes. You can click check for updates on startup and then you don't need to refresh yourself. Okay, final thing. How do we make this repository private? Like let's say you bought add-ons and you don't want to distribute them, I guess. You just say this is a private repository. It's going to ask you for the password. Of course, this is not a private repository yet. Inside your repository, go to settings, go to somewhere here. I don't exactly know where it is. I think it's at the bottom here. Change visibility, change to private. I want to make it private. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you can see now this is a private repository, which means that since we don't have the password, when I try to install something from the tutorial repo, you're going to see it's going to give us this error. It's saying not found, can't find the thing. Of course, we need to make a password. Very easy way to do this without thinking too hard about it. Go to your profile settings, go to developer settings. I had to look all this up myself, right? I didn't know this right off the bat. And inside of here, you're going to see personal access tokens, make one. So I'm going to generate a new password. I'm going to call this tutorial password. Note, this isn't the actual password. This is just the label. I can say this password is only going to work for a certain amount of time. I'm going to say no expiration. Say that you're allowed to look in the repository and the rest doesn't really matter. So generate token, make sure to copy it because the next time you kind of like refresh, for example, it's not going to be visible. This repository is indeed a private one. And I'm going to say here is my password. So now when I pull a refresh and I try to install, it can once again install the thing. Long story short, remote repositories exist. They're not that useful for the average user, but for me, very useful because I have different computers. I go between managing add-ons as a pain. Once there is a remote asset browser, then it's going to be a big deal because then I can upload a bunch of assets and say, you, you're allowed to download them. Or you, if you pay me, I can give you an access token. Effectively, you bought my asset. This is more so doomsday prepping, but for a good day. So you know how it works. Okay, goodbye. So I have this website, www.cgmatter.com, which recently I've totally redesigned into like a static website. I actually really like the look of it. And this whole website is hosted and made with the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Now, this is a service I've been using for two or three years. There's a few reasons for that. The first of which, it's just easy to make a website. You can just use HTML or drag around UI elements. More recent developments as you can literally like write text or format things using AI artificial intelligence. And also importantly for me is it's very good for hosting kind of like paid services. So I have this kind of like exclusive platform kind of Patreon-esque that is behind a paywall, which is easy to do with Squarespace because they accept all kinds of payments. So I didn't really need to think about how to do it. And then in that case, you probably care about things like analytics, which Squarespace also provides. And if you want to try it for yourself, there's going to be a link in the description. And when you click that, you're going to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So check it out.